Let's look at damped harmonic motion from a pretty basic point of view, so pre-calculus treatment of it. Uh, the classic situation, the sort of formal situation we want to look at or think about is we've got a mass on a spring. It's sliding on a surface here. And if there's no friction or resistance or anything, then we're going to get simple harmonic motion. We drag this mass to the right, or we give it a push to the right, and we let it go, and it's going to oscillate forever. And we're going to get things like sines and cosines. Y equals A, either cosine or sine, let's say cosine right now, of omega times T. And we're going to get a graph that goes that has amplitude absolute value of A. And maybe if A is positive and that's a cosine, we're going to get something like this. And we're going to answer questions like, what's the period? Well, that's 2 pi over omega. What's the frequency? That's 1 over p or omega over 2 pi. Standard questions like that. Okay. And the key thing is that we're assuming that no energy is lost. The motion does not decrease uh, as you go in time forever. So there's t and there's y. I'm going to call it y, even though it's going horizontal, because I want it to be vertical on this, this graph. Uh, a simple pendulum with no friction, no resistance, is also well modeled by that, where the angle here is y. But the truth is there is friction and resistance. Honestly, I think I need to change color here. Honestly, if we want it to be friction, that what I'm going to discuss isn't an incredibly good model. So maybe don't think about friction so much, but just some sort of like air resistance or put it in molasses or water or something. And the key is that this model works best if the resistance is proportional to the speed. The faster I go, the more there is resistance to pushing it back. And that's that's uh, the assumption we're really making here. Uh, just like we're assuming that the force ex exerted by the spring is proportional to the displacement away from equilibrium. Okay, so we're always going to measure, speaking of that, we're always going to measure things from the equilibrium position. So that if you started at y equals zero, it would just stay there. So how do we incorporate resistance? And this is called damping. Okay, so, well, let's just get a, let's just sketch something that seems plausible. Okay, what I want to do is I want to sketch something where that oscillation decreases in size, or in other words, in amplitude as I go. And you could imagine a model where the frequency or the period changes as well, but that's not the standard model, and it's actually pretty accurate a lot of the time that the, the period doesn't change. So for example, the distance between these two zeros should be about the same as this, should be about the same as this, should be about the same as this. Not doing a great job with that, okay? So that's roughly the kind of picture we have. Well. There's a better way to think about that, and a better way to look at the graph. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in the analog. Remember, notice what I did here is to give myself guides, I drew in the plus absolute value of A and the minus absolute value of A lines that are determined by the amplitude, and that gives me the maxes and mins of this function. Well, I'm going to sketch that in here as kind of connecting the dots, roughly. And a good way to talk about that is the envelope that this complicated function, or somewhat complicated function, fits in a simpler envelope. And the plus and minus versions, these are going to be symmetrical, uh, give me the limits symmetrical about the x-axis. Um, they give me the limits of the oscillation. And so the oscillation is getting squished because this envelope is kind of squishing it. So here's a, a slightly different way to draw the same thing. And just for variety, I'll draw something with a sine variation. Okay, let's. So, so let, me, let me go to the algebra here. We're really saying that y of t is going to be the envelope function. The amplitude is exactly those dotted lines that we had before. Let's switch to sine omega t just to illustrate we can do both. We've got an oscillation, and then instead of multiplying it by a number, we just multiply it by numbers that get smaller as a function of time. And a good way to think about the order in which you want to graph that is first focus on the A of t. And I'll talk about explicitly what kind of function we really are most interested in here for a simple and classic mathematical model. But we're going to draw y equals plus or minus A of t. And then we're going to draw the sign in between. And to be nice and careful, let's say, um, and to make sure the zeros kind of lined up here. Okay. 
I'll draw something that always crosses in a uniform way. And so the length between the zeros here is not changing, and, but the amplitude is. Now, I'd like to say constant period, and that's not a bad way to think about it, but it's a little bit uh, sketchy because this isn't literally a periodic function. It's not, it's not the same from here to here to here to here. It's quite different. But mainly what's happening is just getting smaller. And so we c if we understand it's a fairly loose use of the word period, it's still the o an okay idea to say that it's not trying to get faster or slower in oscillation. It's just the amplitude is trying to change. So what's a, the most simple but physically plausible kind of A of T? Well, here's the situation you often have. You have something where we observe, let's say, that the amplitude, so we're really focusing on that dotted line, the amplitude decreases, I might have to switch markers again, by, let's say, a factor of one half, sort of like a half-life thing, every, I think I, my example I was going to do on the computer, it was like every five seconds. Okay. And it's, let's think about why this would be plausible. Um, why don't we just have an amplitude function that goes like this, and then it's dead? It just goes from a big oscillation to small, and here's the negative, and it goes do, 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 boom, it's dead. Well, if you think about how springs work, that's not really what they do. They don't sort of decay quickly and then keep decaying quickly and then die in front of your eyes so much. They eventually do stop wiggling because of, of the complexities of the real world. But, but I hope it's plausible that this picture I had of sort of a curving decay is more plausible. And here's why. If we have this assumption, oops, forgot to draw that. If we have assumption that the resistance is proportional to the speed, then when it's going f um, at the start, it's going quite fast, and it, because it's going a long distance in the same time, then you're going to get more resistance. And so when you're going big and the amplitude's big, it's going to decrease fast. But then when the amplitude's small, it's not going to decrease as fast. And this is exactly the simplest version of that kind of phenomenon where you have some quantity that decreases by factors or ratios instead of by differences and that it goes from like eight to four to two to one to a half to a fourth to a sixteenth and doesn't go to zero theoretically ever okay and we know exactly what that kind of function is it shouldn't be remotely surprising that that kind of function that would be like a of t is one half to the t over five we, we, we know exactly how to create a function like that. This starts at 1. Getting really thin here. Let's change colors again. I think I might need a new stock because every one I pick up is not very good. This would ch start at 1, and then at 5 seconds, it's a half. And then at 10 seconds, it's a quarter. And then at 15 seconds, it's an eighth. And we get an exponential decay. Ooh, let's put it in dotted. And then just draw the negative of that. And then draw some sort of curve in between, and then we'll be more specific about that in a second. Okay. So, now, of course, we could also uh, have A of T is like an E to the minus KT. These are equivalent. You just have to translate between this half-life terminology, which I think is more intuitive, and the K, which turns out to be better for calculus and other advanced applications. Okay, so I'm going to stick with this, but don't don't think it has to be the one half to the T over L kind of format. It could totally be like, be like this, and this is much more likely what you're going to see in books, especially more advanced books. Okay, so if that's A of T, then what's Y of T going to be? This was an even worse marker than the other ones. Oh, but the red looked good though. Oh, nice. It's colorful. I like it. Okay, so we're going to take that A of T. And then we're going to multiply it by a sine or cosine. Like here, uh, that would be a sine wave. I'm not sure what my computer example that I'll show you in a minute. I'm not sure what I'm using. Sine of omega t. Okay. So just to be really specific, let's say it had it's something that would have period. This is going to be the periodic part. And we can't literally say that with the factor it's periodic, but we're going to be fast and loose with that a little bit. Let's say it had a period of three seconds. And so the 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 omega is going to be 2 pi over that, okay? Let's see if 
we have a good graph of that. I think that's the one I used. Yeah, here we are. Y equals one half to the T over five. That guarantees that it goes down by 50%, factor of, of a half every five seconds, sine of two pi over three times T. And there's a nice prettier picture than I can draw of that. And what you can see, notice that from one zero to the next, and then the next after that, the next up crossing is three, and then six, and then nine, and then 12, and then 15. And so it's trying to be periodic with period three, but it's not literally repeating the same thing over and over again. It's repeating the same kind of thing, but with this different amplitude. So I've graphed, the graphs here are just one half to the t over five and minus one half to the t over five. Those are always good to put in, and it's nice to put them in dashed or dotted if you can. And then the actual graph I'm put in with the combination of the varying amplitude and the sine wave. So that's a classic example of damped harmonic motion. And I'm not saying it's the only realistic way to damp, but it has the best properties. It's realistic up to a pretty good approximation in a lot of cases where you're combining an exponential function and a damping. So if we, I do want to make sure we can write that as e to the minus kt as well, sine omega t. That's how you're often going to see it with the exponential with the factor. And remember, ooh, that if you want to translate between those guys, um, then we know we have L equals ln2 over K, and K similarly is ln2 over L. Oops. Where that, that's the L, the half-life. So I like both formats. I don't want to lock us into one or another. So we could ask questions like, I don't want to make this too long, but let's wrap it up with just one question. Like, um, how long... Or let's see, what is the amplitude after four full periods? Okay, so graphically, we could look at that. Gosh, it's, I'm kind of losing it here. We can just look, okay, one full period, up crossing to up crossing, two, three, four at 12. Yep, the period is three. 12 is going to be four periods. And the amplitude, roughly speaking, it's the height of that next peak. But really, what we're asking is, what's the height of the dotted line right at 12? And it's, it's going to be very close to each other. Okay, So we're going to have, it's going to be four periods times three seconds is 12. And we're just going to plug in, oops, that we got that one half format. We're going to plug in one half to the 12 over 5. And let's do an evaluate numerically. So about 0.19, about 19% of what it started with. Okay. Now, one thing that's really important is that this guy, with this format, I have to start with the amplitude being exactly 1. And again, with this, the amplitude is going to start with exactly 1. That's silly. So we're really, in general, going to have like an A here in front. So it'll start with some amplitude A and then decrease from there. So there's vi there are various ways we can make it more general. We could do a shift here, although we'll probably not worry about that. Um, and then we can ask questions like this. After a certain number of periods, what's the amplitude? When the amplitude is something, how many periods have gone by, things like that. But we'll do that in class with problems.